second episode of Lion Talks. I'm your host, Derek Gomez. And I'm your host, Desiree DeJesus. Today, we have a very special guest on today's show. He is a trailer editor and composer at Netflix. He attended the University of Missouri in Columbia, Missouri. His clients consist of many major broadcast networks and streaming services such as Netflix, HBO, TBS, Amazon, Warner Brothers, and Cinemax. He has produced trailers for Happy Death Day 2, Hold the Dark and Unsolved Mysteries, the ever-popular Netflix original series, The Queen's Gambit, among other major films and television series. He is also a multi-Cleo Key Art Award winner for his creation. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our honor to introduce Mr. Johnny O'Neill. Mr. O'Neill, welcome to today's show. We are very glad to have you on here. How are you today? I am great, and I am very excited to be here to talk to you all about the very interesting and exciting career of editing. No matter how tedious it can seem sometimes, it can be very rewarding, and happy to talk to you all about it today. That's awesome. Well, we're glad. We're, we're happy to ask you some questions here today. So let's go ahead and start uh, pretty much from the beginning and sort of how it all started. So our first question is, uh, when you were growing up, how relevant was music? Music and television, and when did you fall in love with it? Mr. O'Neill, welcome to today's show. Well, going back to the beginning, I grew up in, born in California, grew up in St. Louis, Missouri. Was in St. Louis from like five years old to 26. I'm 40 now, which is time flies, y'all. You won't believe it. It's crazy. Um, and when I was very young, I fell in love with the music. I went to these concerts when I was a kid, and the first time I saw this band play, a full room full of people, and you know, as soon as the band took a stage, just the energy in the room and the feeling that it gave me was enough to make me decide that my passion for music was. Uh, overwhelming well, and not only that I event can... solidified it for me it also kind of helped music has always been something for me that helped me deal with my emotions you know like depression or anxiety yeah. if I ever felt bad I just played music and I still feel it to this day and I carry that with me and that brought me to Los Angeles because I wanted to pursue a career in music and when I got here when I was about 26 years old Back in 2006, I worked a couple odd jobs while my band, who came with me, tried to do everything we could to, you know, make it. And uh, music is a very incredibly difficult industry, especially now. At the time when we came to L.A., it was like the music industry was shifting, you know. MP3 technology was blossoming and record label structures were changing forever at that time. And... Um, <clears throat> After about a year of being in LA, I got a job at a place called Trailer Park, which is one of the biggest preeminent advertising agencies for film and television today, still. Even back in 2006, it's still in 2021, the, one of the biggest. And I, I, got, I got a job there as like a, you know, entry level position. And um, we can speak more about that later, about how that kind of can happen for you as you all grow in if you ever want to, if any of you are seriously interested in entertainment, to answer the question, I wasn't terribly interested in film and television. I was more geared towards music, but this job, this entry level position was all I had to like survive in LA. So I put everything into it and I worked my way up from runner, which was the entry level position. You like back in the day, you drive things around to different studios, Fox or whatever. And um, I went from that to assistant editor and I went from assistant editor to full-time editor at Trailer Park. And, um, you know, I think my background in music allowed me to be good at editing because modern trailer editing, you have to have a sense of rhythm and pace and, and tone. And, and there has to be like an emotion to it. And so I excelled at it. And I realized that the salaries for editing and editors is pretty high and when I being a kid from Missouri you know I grew up from middle class upbringing I never wanted for anything but I never imagined in my entire life I could make money like that and so uh trailer park you know I left there in 2011 I went to another big agency until about 2018 and then I uh I joined Netflix in 2019 wow that is that's very astonishing and you sound like a very accomplished man. So uh, 
<laughs> Maybe. <laughs> There's always more to do. Well, you sure sound like a very accomplished man. So uh, talking a little bit about how, when you're talking a little bit about how you joined Trailer Park and started working your way up to the top in this video editing deal, was there ever like a single defining moment uh, before or after uh, you started working for Trailer Parks where you knew like, this is what I wanna be. I wanna be a trailer editor and composer. That's a great question because I think anybody's journey in life and, and what they want to do can change at the drop of a dime. I mean, even in your own personal lives, you know, you never know when some external event can happen and change the course of your life forever. I mean, you, you never know who you meet in life, who becomes like your best friend. You could be a chance meeting and changes everything. So when I was at trailer park, I dug into editing because I knew it was a career that could help me take care of myself and whatever future family I would start or whatever. And, um, you know, it kind of, sorry, I got distracted. I have a little guest here today. My little <laughs> boy too. Yeah, he's just a baby. <laughs> Say hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> so, um, where were we? To, it, I, I never made the decision that like editing was something I loved or was like really passionate about. It was just a job for me. And I feel like in a lot of ways that actually kind of served me because if I was really like, I feel like you can get in your own way in the creative arts. If you're really overly passionate about something, it can go one of two ways. It can either serve you infinitely down the line, or you can kind of work against yourself because you become so obsessed with something. And so I didn't really care much about editing. It was just a job. And as I went down the line, I began to care about it more. And I found that when I got on particular projects, it kind of got in the way. Like if, if I got a big project, I would overthink it. I would do less powerful creative sometimes because you would overthink it, you know, you just go crazy. And, and when you don't care sometimes and you just let the universe kind of serve you, as long as you're a hard worker and you know, you don't just like not care, it mm -hmm. kind of can benefit you. So there was never a moment where I was like, oh, editing is it. And even to this day, I'm still not like, oh, editing is everything to me. I still kind of carry forward that like, well, this is a job. It's not unlike, you know, driving a bus or, or any, or working in a restaurant or anything like that. It's simply something I'm very lucky and fortunate enough to do because it is in the creative arts and it is a high paying job. So it's not lost on me that I'm very lucky, but I think the less you care about something or let it consume you, if you just ride the wave of the universe giving you what you want and you work hard to better your life. I mean, that I kind of went on a tangent. I mean, the, the, the answer is I've still kind of hold editing at arm's length in my heart to just be like, Oh, well this could stop at any time. You know what I mean? So yeah. Right, right. yeah, there's never a moment where I was like, Oh, this is it. But when I realized it was something I could do to take care of my family, I jumped on that chance, you know? Yeah, I mean, there's always it's always good to have a balance between different things in your life so that way, you yes. know, you don't put yourself too much and you don't lose sight of yourself. Exactly. Very well, very well said. Yeah. So um, uh, you talked about being an entry level, uh, starting out with an entry level job. And now you're here making all these uh, big time trailers uh, for, you know, Netflix, as you mentioned. So could you describe what an average day in your job looks like for you? Are there ever any two days that look like? And what is your favorite part about your job on a regular day? Well, most days kind of look the same now. Uh, the, the, the industry has changed a lot. Yeah. And since I came to Netflix, when I, when I got started, it was a lot of really hard work. And the days looked like 14-hour days, six days a week, constantly. It was just this brutal oh. grind. And that was the time I had to put in to get to the point I'm at now. And now that I'm at Netflix, they kind of, Netflix is a very interesting company in that they kind of, they have this uh, credo, it's like people over process, right? And, and they don't want to, you know, kill their employees with, uh, you know, work that isn't done. They're always looking for efficiencies and things to do, ways to do things better. And, um, you know, nowadays 
I work hard, but the reason I love Netflix so much is, is that these different companies, Trailer Park and the other agency I worked at, it's called Buddha Jones. They have a different relationship with the networks like Netflix and HBO and all that stuff where they have to work really hard to keep these relationships with these clients. When you're actually at the company that does the work, they don't treat you like that so much. So my day to day is like, I kind of wake up, you know, at nine or whatever. And then I just kind of check my emails and I see what's going on. And, um, you know, it's just, it changes every day, but the, the, the constant is just the, you know, the work and learning and trying to better yourself at your craft. And I think your other question was, what's my favorite part of it? My favorite part of it is just that challenge every day of being in creative arts and, and being blessed to kind of try to challenge yourself to do different things in editing because there's multiple genres, right? Like if, if you do a comedy trailer, it's very different than a dark drama trailer. They, they feel different. There's a different pace and a different formula. So you try to kind of get better at every genre and you know, I'm really strong at dark drama and I'm good at comedy, but I'm not as good at comedy, I think, as I am at dark drama. So like when I get a comedy, I get excited because I can like flex that muscle and try to get stronger at it. Mm -hmm. So it's the challenges and kind of keeping excited about it because after 15 years of doing it, you know, you're just like, what, what, else, what, what else can I do? You know, I think the most exciting part for me going forward is the musical aspect of it because I never had really composed music for them. I was just the editor. In Unsolved Mysteries last year was the first time I composed music and actually put it into the edit, and then it went out into the world, and that was that was that was really exciting. Well, that's I mean that's great to hear about that you're also pursuing other um, different avenues about your interests and uh, your career. And you know you were talking earlier about how you're working you know 14 hours, and mm -hmm. um, you were also talking about ways to not lose sight of yourself. And I'm sure you'd agree that, you know, editing and composing as you're talking about is an art form in and of itself. So how do you make sure to not struggle out with burnout with when you're working with your work? Do you simply pace yourself with projects on your own schedule? Or do you have some personal tricks that you'd like to share with us that you help that you use to help keep your mind at ease and at bay? <laughs> well, the demons are always haunting you, you guys. It's, <laughs> it's something you can never escape. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> The, uh, no, that's a great, another, you guys, and I got to say, I read the questions you wrote. They're all very insightful. And these are very great, interesting questions that Thank when you. even asking myself these, these kind of things, it's like, I never think about this stuff, you know? So, um, but yeah, every day, I mean, again, I kind of explained how, since I've gone to Netflix, it hasn't been so brutal. I mean, I still work 14 hour days sometimes, but it's rare. And um, that that was massive. I mean, staying at the agencies, I don't know. I mean, there was a lot of really hard times and there wasn't really much you can do to kind of, I mean, you just had to like, you know, just put your head down and do it. And there was a lot of like, creative work is this very strange alchemical kind of process where, you know, for me personally, let's say on a given day, if I'm starting something, I spend like three hours on Facebook that day. And then I spend one hour like laser focused working on something until I reach burnout. And then I take another break, you know, go on a walk or whatever, anything, anything else, eat some food and then come back in front of my computer and sit down and, and, and noodle around until I just feel that force pull me back in. And then you're always looking for this thing. I don't know if any of you are familiar with the idea of something called flow state where you're like, you're so, you get into the zone so hard that you lose yourself and anything um, happening yeah. around you kind of blurs into the background and you're just like, yeah. and that's what you're looking for. And, and those are, that's like the one tip I'm like, in any creative work, you're always looking for that flow state to kind mm -hmm. of you know and that's when the magic happens yeah right so earlier we talked a little bit about uh, how you created trailers for some big time television series and films like happy death day 2 and the queen's gambit so but what would you say are some of your greatest accomplishments in your career so far well to be clear i didn't actually cut the happy death day 2 trailer i 
composed some musical elements for it. And a friend of mine actually at Buddha Jones cut that trailer. And um, Queen's Gambit, I did entirely. I definitely cut that trailer. There was a couple other pieces of marketing that they did. There was a teaser that was like this like 60 second piece that a friend of mine cut, but I did the main trailer for Queen's Gambit and we had no idea it was going to be that big. I mean, I'm very proud of that one for sure. That one's wild. We yeah. had zero idea that show would become a cultural phenomenon to have that project under my belt will forever in my career be the one thing that you know like awards haven't been announced for last year and, and and we're pretty hopeful that you know it will win some awards because it keeps winning emmys and it keeps winning like sag awards yeah. to show it's very popular as you all know and but that's not my crowning achievement the greatest project i ever worked on was a tv show called mr robot and i worked on that a lot and that's my favorite television show of all time and to have worked on my favorite television show like i love queen's gambit it's great but it didn't speak to me or touch my heart like mr robot did and um that's the that will forever be the best thing i've ever done in my entire life and i mean i could never do a queen's gambit again or whatever and mr robot was everything to me so uh that show ended two years ago in season four and i didn't get to work on season four so i kind of got to just like because i went to netflix i got to like watch season four after working on season one two and three and like i guess <laughs> i like cried at the end you know it's like it was so oh. beautiful it's such a great show and so that was it you know well that's very awesome to hear um so like we had said before obviously or had, like you said before the queen's gambit became such a cultural phenomenon mm. but and how mr robot really touched your heart when you were uh cutting the trailers and making the show right uh what, what would what would you say is your dream goal now because everyone can always um shoot for something a little bit bigger dream goal now is to branch further into music and ratchet back editorial at some point um because that was the dream you know that's why i came to la in 2006 i, I really wanted to do music and i kind of got sidetracked with this editing thing and then like you know i have my family and all that stuff and that's very important to me too but in terms of career uh, i kind of have started consulting for music labels i've kind of like startup music labels i have my own sound design company that i'm still growing and working on and that's the big goal for me i mean if i could leave Netflix and start my own record label or, you know, do sound design or composing music full time. Mm -hmm. It's much more challenging. It's, it's, it's so much because when it comes to editing a TV show, you're working on someone else's dream. Yeah. You, mm -hmm. They created that. And my job is to cut it down and make it look incredible and make people want to watch it. Right. When it mm -hmm. comes to music, you're literally reaching into the ether of the universe and trying to pull something out of nothing like how these people did when they wrote these tv shows and made these shows and it's like that's the next level for me is to be able to get to that place where i'm the creator a hundred percent and not like a conduit for someone else's vision so you always got to keep reaching and going beyond because i could comfortably be an editor for the rest of my life great but that would be the dream well, that's, that sounds amazing. I mean, you know, music obviously seems very important to you and mm -hmm. it is always um, important to keep striving for something more. And also, as you said before, keep yourself um, in check and balance uh, to not lose sight of yourself. Yes. And, you know, uh, earlier you mentioned how the Queen's Gambit has become a phenomenon. I mean, it's all over social media when it first came out. I mean, the mm -hmm. trailer racked up so many views. Um, congrats on that, by the way. Yes, so. Uh, people Thank worldwide you. have enjoyed your work. So does it ever sink in for you with just how much people commemorate your work um, now? Yeah, yeah, yes and no, because it, it's it's incredible. And I mean, I have stopped to think about how lucky I am. Again, I mentioned that. I mean, it, it, again, it's not lost on me that I'm, you know, doing what I'm doing. It's It's wild. And, you know, to me, though, again, kind of to the previous question about what my dreams are further from that, if I had written and directed the Queen's Gambit, it would be way more intense in terms of like, oh my God, what have I done? You know what I mean? Like to have worked on the project is in its own way, a massive honor. It's something I couldn't 
even dream before that I would have done. But I think in life, you need to continue to push yourself to get to another level of like, who, who knows where I can go next? Who knows where any of you can go next? I mean, as long as you continue to dream and dream bigger and be humble and, and never, you know, have enough, but be, you know, humble about it. Mm-hmm. You, there's always more and you can always do more. And then even if I think if I had like, you know, written or was the composer for Queen's Gambit or created it, then it's like, what's the next mm-hmm. thing? So it, it's kind of hard. It's this weird thing of where you never really stop to think about what you've done because once you did it, you get like a couple days. It's so weird. Life is so weird in that like you work for months and months or years on something and then when you get it or you win, you know, think of like Olympic athletes. They train their whole life and then they win the gold medal and then it's like they celebrate for a week and then it's like, all right, training begins for next four years. And it's like life is so weird in that way that you, it's just all work and then there's these little gaps of like, oh my God, we did it, man. <laughs> you know, and then like, it just goes away. So I have reflected on it and it's good, but it's usually the next job comes down the pipeline and then you're like, okay, what am I going to do for this? You know, so. So you would say that it's still something that you're working to get used to as you move on to bigger projects or would it still, does it still surprise you sometimes? Oh yeah. I mean, it's wild. It, it, it's crazy. Cause in my mind at this point in between Mr. Robot and um, Queen's Gambit, I mean, it's like, I don't know if you can get much bigger than that. Yeah. And it's like, cause it's weird. Back when I started, I worked in theatrical movies and, uh, you know, I worked on, a the Hobbit was one of the first trailers I ever kind of finished, which was great. It wasn't the big main one, but it was like an international piece. And that was like the first big thing for me that was back in like 2008 or not. No, 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 no. That, I'm sorry. I was at Buddha. That was in like 2013. And that's when I had really started like working on bigger movies. And then when streaming came along, you know, I saw it before everybody else. All the people were still obsessed with movies and, and that's great. But I knew, I could just tell that streaming was the future. And so I jumped into that immediately as soon as I got the chance. Everybody else thought I was crazy. And I was like, okay, you know. And so then now fast forward to something like Queen's Gambit, it's like, it's just crazy, guys. I, I, I don't know what to say about it, you know. Absolutely. I mean, the way you describe, you know, how life is, it's so weird because really, I think that's what makes life, I guess, interesting, the journey and not yeah. just the result, the way you yeah. describe it. I mean, even yourself, I mean, working in entry level jobs and then grinding 14 hour days to get to where you are mm-hmm. today. I mean, in that in and of itself, that's pretty astonishing, I think. Yeah, I mean, you all have to do that too. And it's like, it's hard in the beginning for everybody Absolutely. that makes it in the end. The beginning is always the craziest part of the journey. It's just like, imagine, you know, a long hike like a, or a marathon. That mile one kind of is exciting. But then by mile two, you're like, oh my God, I have 24 more of these. You know what I mean? It gets like very right. hard. But then when you get it done, you're like, yeah, you know, so. Absolutely. So uh, speaking of your job a little bit, what would you say are some of the more underrated aspects of your job? The perks of working at Netflix are incredible. I mean, the one thing that, you know, when we have, I remember when I was working at Buddha, this like financial advisor came in and he kept espousing how cool our job was. You know, we get to watch movies before they come out and stuff like that. And that that's all really cool and stuff. But the perks really came when I went to Netflix because they, they treat their employees so well. And, you know, you kind of get to watch, like, stuff before it comes out. You have access to anything, you know, months in advance of its release. And you get to kind of see how – you get to see how the sausage is made, for lack of a better metaphor. And it kind of can ruin the magic of film and television in its own way. Like, that's why I was so excited to actually just watch the end of Mr. Robot instead of work on that final season, you know, because you, you, like, get dailies. You don't get episodes right away. Sometimes you'll just mm-hmm. get, like – the raw footage and that's kind of cool too. Cause you can kind of see like Christian Slater laugh when they call cut and crack jokes and stuff like that. And nobody gets to see that, but the editors are the people that were on set that day. And the, I think those are the kind of like the coolest perks, you know, it's like that that's the fun stuff you get to do, but you know, it's editing is just a lot of time alone with yourself where you're mm-hmm. like, 
oh my god <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> you're like battling yourself literally so there are perks though Yes, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that a lot of people who are interested in not just editing, but um, also the film industry as a whole are mm -hmm. watching this and, you know, they're really t internalizing everything you're saying. So with that, is there um, anything that you recommend for someone who is wanting to become a video editor, like any programs, classes, certifications that you recommend a current student taking so that way they can help nurture their future potential success? So this is a tough one, and I'm glad we're talking about this because y'all need to hear this, and this is kind of the, this is what I've learned in my, you know, 15 years of running around Los Angeles trying to figure it out. Um, so I am very lucky, and again, like I've said many times, that is not lost on me that I'm in the position I'm in, but when you all mentioned me in the introduction and how I went to the University of Missouri, I never completed my education and I do not advise that for any of you. If you have the opportunity to finish your degrees, you should. It's a very l learning time in your life, but I had a different dream. I wanted to be a rock star, which is crazy in its own right. So I dropped out of college two years in and that's fine. And it's, I think everyone's journey into whatever they wanna do, again, I fell into editing and, kind of going back to the whole listening to the universe and being open to opportunities. You know, I meet a lot of people out here in LA that are like trying to do something and then an opportunity will present itself to them. And because it's not in line with their dream of what they want to do, they ignore those opportunities. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I listened to the universe telling me like, Hey, you know, all we got for you is this editing job. And I was like, okay, God, I'll do it. You know? And because I did it and I worked at it for so long, I'm getting more opportunities to do major stuff in music than I ever would have had if I didn't do editing. So everyone's journey is different. And when it comes to classes and education about whatever art and craft you want to do, I was so obsessed with music and I would play, my main instrument is electric bass. You can see a couple, there's a bunch of big amps back there. Um, mm -hmm. I played that thing every night and every day. I played that bass and I learned how to play in and I, I learned music and the art of music and, you know, just learning, I listened to records and kind of like play and I just did it. And that's the one thing I remember talking to this guy who's, who's the best editor of all time. He's no, he's very well known in the industry as the greatest editor of all time. And I remember talking to him about it cause he worked at Buddha with me and he was like, I was like, do you have any advice for me? And he's like, just do it. It's like, it's, it's the Nike slogan of like, if you want to get anything out of this life, I mean, literally, you have to just do it. So if y'all can get access to like Premiere or something like that, which isn't that expensive, you can get a student license or, or even if you're into music pro tools or student licenses, you know, you can get Fruity Loops, you can make beats and you can edit stuff just at home. Like go and get your iPhone and just go like shoot some stuff with your friends and put it together. And in the process of doing that, that's the greatest education. I didn't need a, a university to teach me everything I know because I just learned it by doing it. And I'm sure you all know that and have heard that, but I'm a living case of learning. Like intelligence is not, intelligence is curiosity. Like, like really, I mean, it, you know, I've spent my share of, my fair share of time playing video games and relaxing or whatever but you know you if you, you can't ignore that pull to do it because if you just want to be something and you don't do that i'm sure you all know many people like that whether they're your friends or your family that have big talk you know but they don't do anything those are the people that aren't going to make it and, and if you got that friend or if it's yourself, if you go home after school or whatever and you noodle around on premiere every night or you play guitar every night, that's you're going to you're going to make it no matter what anybody says. And, and so and then just really quickly on, on the topic of moving to Los Angeles, I mean, it's 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 one of those things when it comes to working in film and television, the places to be are places like Los Angeles, New York, Atlanta, I think, you know, Chicago has a big scene there and, and, and it's it's major city hubs and and y'all cannot stop dreaming to if you can we're in a new era where you can work from anywhere you you can do back into the early 2000s you had to go to la you had to go to new york and nowadays you can kind of like break the internet with some really interesting piece of content that you make at home in, in texas like it, it doesn't matter where you are but if if you go to a place like la and you get the scholarship to go to school in new york do that 
is that you're going to grow so much by leaving home and going to these big cities. So just do it and broaden your horizons. And, and that's, that's the advice I got. Well, thank you for um, that. That was really inspiring. And I'm sure, you know, like, as you mentioned, we should try to take advantage of all the opportunities that we come across. I mean, especially now, you know, in the state we're in, it's kind of hard to see all the opportunities that are out there, but, you know, we can just do anything that uh, with anything that we have. So yes. um, that was that was really um, inspiring. And thank you for all those words. We're going to wrap this up with a game that we're trying to make our tradition here at Lion Talks. So it's called the first word that comes to mind game. So how it works is we're going to tell you a word. And like the title says, you're going to say the first word or phrase that comes to mind when you hear that word. Got it. OK, Love so it. your first word is film. Uh, I like TV better. <laughs> <laughs> Missouri. Oh, green trees. Cardinals. The best team in baseball. I nice. disagree, but <laughs> I, I understand. <laughs> Dog. Dog? Dog. Sunny. <laughs> that comes to my mind. Aw. Lions. Great school with a lot of great opportunities and staff that I'm very lucky to be talking to. Thank, Thank you. you. Great answer. Band. Radiohead. Nice choice. Nice choice. Yes. And the last one is Johnny O'Neill. Uh, a work in progress. I mean... <laughs> In spite of all my success and the things that I've done and what you all know about me, I'm 40 years old and I still make a lot of mistakes, you guys. And it, it's just, just never stop growing. And when you think you've made it, it's, you haven't, you know, it's like, they're great. Speaking of radio, I agree. When you, when you think you feel it, it's gone. When you think you have it, it's gone. And so it's just like, it's like, I think you all said it very succinctly. It's a journey and not a destination. So if you don't forget that, things will be all right. Yes, thank you. Well, Mr. O'Neill, we greatly appreciate your time um, that you spent with us talking with us here at Lion Talks and all these great pieces of advice and inspirational information. Thank you so much for your time and for joining us here. Absolutely. It's been an honor and I love doing stuff like this. And if you ever want me back to, to help in any way, I mean, I think, uh, you know, you guys have my email. If you ever have any questions for me, anything you ever want to ask, I'm 100% here for all of you. Just let me know. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. So to everyone watching on YouTube Live, thank you for joining us on our second episode. We will continue working to keep bringing you exciting guests. Please send us a message if you have any questions, suggestions, comments at social.worldscholars at stisd.net. I'm going to repeat that again. Social.worldscholars at stisd.net. We are looking forward to hearing from you. On behalf of our principal, Mr.